So on to the strategies and games that are probably being played in your own home. Game one is like a strategy of observation. He never initiates because he's always kind of waiting to see what happens. This strategy is evergreen and ongoing. What I mean by that is that it's always happening. He's always doing recon work. And you've inadvertently set yourself up for this game, unfortunately. He was creating an agreement with you, a silent and unwritten kind of contract. You just didn't realize it. In the beginning, you didn't ask him questions like, what are you looking for in a relationship? Or what's your idea of a partner? Or what's your idea of a relationship? Or what's your vision for us as a couple? You didn't ask the questions overtly or have a conversation because you were never taught that you could. Just think about that for a second. He's doing recon on you. Evil is studying, has been studying you. But you weren't raised to vet masculinity through your femininity. And it has put you at a huge disadvantage. So it feels awkward to form those kinds of questions in your mouth. And it feels wrong for even thinking them. It seems like you should just know. And it seemed like you had the same idea for what marriage would look like in the future. Because he was mirroring your own thoughts, your own ideas, wishes, and desires back to you. All the communication and interpersonal exchanges, it all seemed transparent. Because you thought you were entering into your happily ever after. You had no choice but to agree with him. How could you not? You have so much in common in the beginning. It seemed like you were meant for each other. There was this romantic element that you brought into it and it blinded you to the fact that you're entering into a nightmare, not a fairy tale. You weren't shrewd. No one taught you what it means to be a feminine warrior or how to be her. You were taught that modesty and being nice is all you need. In fact, they're still wrecking millions of lambs by telling them the same useless, dangerous information. Jesus tells us we're going into an evil world where we're going to fight the kingdom of darkness. And Christendom arms females with a water pistol that smiles nicely and squirts lots of pleases and thank yous and they expect her to be a warrior. All the while, evil is doing his due diligence. He was dating you for data, vetting and testing through all your vulnerabilities. He was strategically unguarded, and that led you to believe that you were getting to know a real person. That's how he tricked you. But now, after you're married, what's emerged is less like a shared vision of two people on a joint venture with a common goal. Instead, it's a one-sided venture with you doing all the relational heavy lifting that God created him to do. Lack of planning, nominal interest, and little to no amount of initiation or intentional effort into the marriage relationship. Instead, he leans heavily into hobbies, functions, and activities that are mostly done alone. Things requiring no interactions from you, the kids, or other people. That word alone is important because in Genesis 2, God said, it's not good that man is alone. You feel like you're married to a person who's single. That's why it seems like you're a couple, but you feel lonely. He enjoys all the benefits of marriage with none of the responsibility. You and your kids are a movie set that he can walk into and play act after work. It's all rehearsed lines and roles being played out. You can feel the familiar patterns and they feel sickly. There's only two possibilities. He doesn't realize his lack of headship and immature relationship skills are disobedience to God and they're hurting you or he does, and it's all intentional. 
you've got to decide what's best for you. You can continue to communicate more, staying engaged in the game he's playing, revealing more and more about yourself, more communication that's rewarding his strategy of recon. Or you can stop talking about the same thing, which is actually nagging. That's another video. I don't want to get into that right now. Um, so stop talking and instead start making clear statements about what you need. Requests that are clear, simple, and point of fact with no explanation. This is key. No explanation. It's not a conversation. Not at this point. You're merely giving him information so that he can self-correct. And you're giving him the space in which to do that if he chooses. Let him set the course for his own self-correction. As the head, this is healthy masculinity. He'll rise to the challenge of collaboration with your femininity as he embraces his masculinity for healthy relationship like God says in 1 Corinthians 7, verse 3 and verse 33, and Ephesians 5, 28. Or he won't, and more darkness will emerge as you experience more ambiguity, confusion, and frustration. 